So before we begin explaining loops, let me introduce you to if statements. So first let's create a script and delete this code inside of here. And let's also create a part so that we can test if statements on. And let's also define our part in our script, just like this, if I can actually type it out correctly. And oh yeah, and also you can just type in workspace, all lowercase, instead of typing game.workspace. And this is mostly so you can save some time, so yeah, try typing this out instead of game.workspace. And now, if statements. What are they? Well, they're basically a piece of code that run under specific conditions. So for example, if you have a simulator game and the player tries to buy an egg with an if statement, you can check if that player has enough coins to buy that egg. And if he does, then let him buy the egg. But if he doesn't, then give him a warning that he doesn't have enough coins to buy that egg. Or for example, in the English language, we can say, if I had one million dollars, I would buy a house. So our condition is, that if we had one million dollars, then we would buy a house. But how does that look like in Roblox Studio? Well, it's pretty simple. We first have to type in if, because it's an if statement, then type out our condition, which I'll explain in a moment, and then to finish our condition, type in then and press enter. And now inside of here, between this and this, we can put as much code as we want. And then to finish our if statement, we have to make sure to put an end at the end. But how do we type out a condition? Well, let me demonstrate through an example. Let's make an if statement where we check if the part's color is red. And if it is red, then let's print out the part is red. So let's delete this example, and now let's make that part is red sentence into an if statement. So let's start with an if, and now the condition. How would we type that? Well, first we need two values. One value is the value that we want to compare, and the second value is the value that we want the first value to be. Understand? Well, let me show you. So as you said, the first value is the value that we want to compare, so for us, it's the brick color property of our part. And that is pretty easy to type. And now to see if our part's color is really red, we have to type in two equal signs. And these two equal signs basically says is equal to. And now on the right side, we have to type in the color that we want the first part to be. In our case, it's really red. And now to finish our condition, type in then and press enter and now we type our code which is just to print out the part is red and that is pretty easy so let's see what happens if you run the game well nothing happened well that's because our part isn't red so that means that our code actually worked so let's see if it will actually work if we make the parts color equal to red and as you can see, it actually printed out the part is red. But why is that? Well, it's because the part's brick color, really red, is equal to really red, which is logical. But what if you want to print out that the part isn't red? Well, I have to copy this if statement and check each color that there is in Roblox Studio and then type something like this and then copy this again, and then go check another color, and so forth and so on. Well, no, you don't. We can use something called else, and this is also a statement. And you don't type else outside of an if statement. You type an else inside of an if statement. And else statements are usually after the code of the if statement, but it's typed out before the end and now this space between else and end is the code that you want to run if this condition isn't correct so if this condition isn't correct that means that our part isn't really red so let's put code in the else statement that says that our part isn't red my god that sentence doesn't make sense but whatever and now if we change our color to toothpaste and run the game again 
we can see that, that it printed out the part isn't red. But what if I want to check another color? Will I just have to copy this and paste it for every single col color there is in Roblox Studio? Well, no, that's stupid. So delete this and let's learn about else if. But it's basically this and this combined. But where do you type it? Well, you type it before the else, if you have one, and after the if statement. So it's basically located here. And as you can see, it also has a then. And that's because, well, as I've said, else if is basically a combination of this and this. And in here, we have to type in another condition. So for example, instead of seeing if the color, if the parts color is really red, let's see if the parts color is really blue. And let's print out the part is blue. And now let's see what happens if you run the game and change our color to really blue. And now once you run the game, we can see it prints out the part is blue. But what happens if you change the parts color to really blue before this else if statement? So for example, what happens if you do this? It's the brick color dot new really blue. Will this piece of code run because we changed the parts color to really blue? Well, let's actually see. So let's change the parts color back to really red. And as you can see, this statement ran because our parts color was red. Then it printed out the part is red. And then it changed the color of our part to really blue. But for some reason, it didn't print out the part is blue. Even though we changed the brick color to really blue before this condition. So why is that? Well, it's because once one condition is correct, Roblox Studio will skip all the other conditions. And because this first condition was correct, it ran this code right here and then it skipped all the way to the end without even looking at this one or this one. Alright, let me now show you some actual examples because nobody's actually gonna check if a part's color is a specific color. So let's actually delete this right here and also this variable that we created. And now let's do the thing that I said in the first example, in that simulator example, if you remember. So let's make two variables. One is the amount of coins the player has. I'll type it coin amount and this will be 5, 400. And let's make a second variable, which is the cost of the egg. So for example, let's make it 300. And now let's make an if statement that checks if the player has enough coins to buy that egg. And if he doesn't, print out the player doesn't have enough coins. So first, start with an if, and then let's type the condition. So the value that we want to compare is the coin amount, and then let's see if the player has as much coins as the egg costs, which is 300. And the condition with a then, press enter, and now let's print player has enough coins. And now let's use an else, because what happens if the player doesn't have enough coins? We have to warn them. So let's print out player is broke. And if you run the game, we can see that the player is broke. Why? How? The player has 400 coins and the egg only costs 300. And 400 minus 300 is 100, which means the player has enough coins. So why did it say that the player is broke? Well, it's because we used the wrong comparison operator. We typed out is equal to, and that means that this, this value on the left must be the exact same value on the right. And because 400 isn't equal to 300, it printed out player is broke. So how do we fix that? Well, we have to use the greater than or equal to. And now we actually fixed our problem because now it's checking if the coin amount is larger or exactly the amount the egg costs. So if you press run, we can see that it says player has enough coins. 
So if we stop the simulation again and test our if statement once more by decreasing the coin amount by 200 so that the player doesn't have enough coins, we can see that it will print out the player is broke, well, no. which means our script is actually working correctly. But you might be wondering, what if the player doesn't have enough storage in his inventory? Well, it's thankfully an easy fix. So first, let's create two more variables. One variable is the amount of pets the player currently has. So let's name it something like pet amount equal to 10. And the second variable is the maximum storage of the player. And let's name it something like max storage equal to 10. So how do we make it so the player buys an egg if he has enough coins and enough storage in his inventory? Will we have to do something like this? Or should we use an else if statement? Well, no, because that doesn't make any sense. We can't check these things separately because that will break the game. So we have to use something special and that is and. And it's pretty simple to use. So after our first condition, we have to put in a space, type in and, and now we have to type another condition. For us, it's to see if the amount of pets is less than the max storage. So type in the pet amount and then type in less because we have to check if he has less pets than the maximum storage in his inventory. And then type in max storage and now let's also change this so it makes sense. And now let's test the game. And as you can see, because our pet amount is 10 and the max storage is 10, we printed out player cannot buy the egg. And that's because this condition wasn't true. We put in, we made it so that we have to have less pets than the maximum storage in our inventory. And because of this, it doesn't allow us to purchase an egg. So let's actually lower this count to five, for example. And let's see what happens now. We still got the player cannot buy the egg print. And that's because we also we are also broke. So let's make our money increase by 200. And now once you press play, we can see that it says player can purchase egg. And also there's another special thing that's basically a brother of this thing right here. And that is or. And this basically allows for this statement to be correct or the other statement to be correct. So we just need one statement, so we just need one condition to be true, so that this code right here runs. Whereas with AND, this condition and this condition has to be true for this to actually run. So let me give you an example with the OR thing. So let's delete this and this also. So, because I can't think of a good example, let's get our part again. And now let's make an if statement that checks if our part is really red or if it's really blue. So type in if, then let's get the part's brick color. Let's see if it's really red. Let me just zoom out a little bit. Then type in or, because we want to check if the part's brick color is really red or if it's really blue. And now check if it's equal to really blue. Now type in then, press enter. And in here let's type in the part is red or blue. And now if you run the game we can see that it prints out the part is red or blue. If you change the color to really red the same thing will happen. And if you change the color to green we can see that nothing will happen because this condition isn't correct. But what if I want to make code run when something isn't correct? Well there are two ways to do this. You can either use the isn't equal sign which is a squiggly line and an equal sign just like this and also you have to put in and here because you have to make sure that this condition and this condition is correct because if we have the color really red this condition will be false but this condition will be true and if we have the or thing then the if statement will run even though only one value is correct it's kind of hard to explain and you will kind of have to think about it from time to time, but I hope you understand this point. Or you can make your life way easier. So let's change this AND back to an OR 
and let's change these signs from isn't equal to to is equal to just like this and now let's put everything in parentheses so select the whole condition just like this and push the open parentheses key on your keyboard all right and now before this condition let's put a not and this not right here basically negates this whole condition inside of these parentheses and if you were to remove these parentheses it will first of all give us an orange line and second of all this not will be assigned to this condition instead of the whole condition so make sure to put your whole condition inside of parentheses and now if you try to run the code you will see that it will run correctly and if you change it to red for example you can see that it doesn't print out this thing right here because we are negating this whole condition by using this knot right here. And that's basically it for this video. If you found this video actually useful, then please do subscribe and turn on notifications so you can stay tuned on future tutorial videos. And don't forget to leave a like and a comment down below telling me if I did a good job explaining this topic. And now, see you soon with me explaining about loops.